Throughout these Keras code examples, I want to highlight instances where it's clear to me where there isn't as much of a large difference between PyTorch and TensorFlow. I know this is a tough decision for many people. For me as well, it's been tough having to uh, kind of learn PyTorch as well as TensorFlow and Keras. But once you kind of get to learn them more, you, you know that it's really doing the same thing. It just has a slightly different syntax. So in this first video, I want to show how uh, PyTorch and TensorFlow custom data loaders are actually really similar in syntax. Probably the big difference to me is that uh, TensorFlow has many ways of doing this, whereas I think PyTorch has more of a single standard way of doing this. So this is the functionality of PyTorch that originally attracted me to switch from Keras to PyTorch, is I really like how easy it is to load a data set and then add some custom pre-processing. So in my personal experiments, this is manifested in my uh, testing with supervised contrastive learning. This is where we load our data set and then we sample a given uh, positive image and then we want to go find a corresponding another positive pair from that same data set. So say we sample a cat from CIFAR 10, we want to go find another cat from CIFAR 10. This is how we do the supervised contrastive learning task. So I really like this functionality that's available with get item in the PyTorch dataset class. So the question then is how do you do this in Keras and TensorFlow and how different is this syntax really, you know, making these PyTorch and Keras such different things to learn. But so going through these Keras examples, I've seen some cases. Uh, so this is an example of the semantic segmentation example from uh, Keras examples, where you have this same exact syntax. It's just called a Keras at utils sequence. So this is one kind of syntax in Keras that basically exactly mimics this data set loader in PyTorch. But as I mentioned previously, there's kind of like a lot of ways to load data sets in TensorFlow and Keras. And I think this makes it more confusing. I think this is how it confuses people and people like the simplicity of PyTorch, at least for this one example. So this is just one small case, the data set loader of the difference between PyTorch and TensorFlow. Throughout this series, I'll be trying to find uh, more of these examples where they're really not so dissimilar. Again, this is Keras. You see initializer, length, get item, and then and this is PyTorch. This is really the same exact thing. So then again, so in TensorFlow and Keras, they seem to have a lot of different ways of doing this. This is an example of how you pipeline data from a directory that's stored in a file system and folders. And then this is another example where you've, uh, you've loaded the data set into memory and now you turn it into a data object using dot from tensor slices. And now here's the key difference. In this syntax, instead of doing the logic in this get item function, you apply the custom uh, processing to the data set by chaining on dot map and then giving it some function to do with each input uh, sample and its label. So in this case, train preprocessing, it takes in a volume because we're using three dimensional uh, CT scan classification, but it doesn't matter at all what, what exactly the data is. It could be a text sequence or it could be just a regular RGB image. And it applies some processing and it returns a processed volume label. So another thing about uh, PyTorch is once you define your data loader and you instantiate it by having say train loader equals torch.utils.data.dataloader and then this custom train set that we just overwrit with our, uh, by, uh, I think this is called super classing, I'm not exactly sure, but we see how we inherit the functionality of this data set class from PyTorch and then we write in our own custom logic, define an instance of it. And now something that I know a lot of people like about PyTorch, and it's built right into the, right as you start off with PyTorch, they give you a CIFAR 10 example, and they show you how to do this uh, visualization of the data set. And I just think these, these core examples, like the start here examples, are huge for how people generally, not, you know, not like the super experts who already know exactly what to do, but most people who are, who are still torn between PyTorch or TensorFlow like these little examples that help them see how to do certain things. So this is how you uh, iterate and sample a batch from this trader, uh, train loader. You do data iter equals iterator train loader and then dot next. But in Keras and TensorFlow, you have the exact same syntax. The only difference is that it's slightly different. This is when you have a tf.data object. You just do dot take one. Same exact idea as uh, pipelining this with dot next. Thanks for watching this quick overview of how the dataset loaders are similar in PyTorch as well as TensorFlow and Keras. I hope that videos like this will help people to uh, not feel like I'm isolating them. If, you've, if you're currently working with PyTorch and you feel like these Keras code examples are isolating you and your tool set, I hope that these examples can show you how there's a lot of similarity between these frameworks and learning PyTorch will improve your TensorFlow skills. It won't like hurt it or negatively cause you to say memorize all these things and then overwrite the syntax you've memorized for the other language because you know there's a lot of insane similarities between the two. So thanks for watching and please check out the Keras code example series if you haven't already. Mm -hmm.